To begin with, transformation. One thing that I want to make clear, very clear to you is our ligation product. If we look at our ligation mix, remember, ligation does not mean that we always get a recombinant molecule which we need. We need a kind of molecule which is shown at the bottom of the slide. In this case, the blue color indicates the plasmid or the vector, whatever we are using. And the black colored fragment, it indicates our insert. Okay, this is the molecule that we want to obtain. But in a ligation mixture, there are several possibilities of joining of the molecules. Okay? The first possibility is a vector can self-ligate and our insert can also self-ligate, giving the circular molecules. Now, the vector alone can actually replicate because it has got an origin of replication. But in your ligation mixture, the insert, self-ligated insert, it will never replicate because it does not have an origin of replication and it will be degraded by the cell very soon. Now, if we look at the other products, one vector molecule can join with an other vector molecule, making a linear molecule. Or the two insert molecules, they can also join together to make a bigger linear molecule. The third option is what we need. These are not only the three products. Okay? There may be a different combinations of the vector and insert or insert itself, ligating again and again and again. Yes, all possibilities are there. Only the molecules which will live within the cell of transformation will either be the plasmid alone or the recombinant molecule. All the other ve vectors or the recombinant molecules, they will be uh, non-recombinant molecules. They will be actually uh, degraded within the cell and they will not be transformed or they will not be detected in the transformation process. Okay. So if you look at this picture and then we go a little bit further. So the transformation of ligation products the process of transferring exogenous DNA into cells is called transformation. This is the simple definition for transformation. In case of bacterial cells, we need uh, usually two methods, which are most commonly applied in the laboratory. One of them is called the chemical method, which means you are treating the cells with calcium chloride to make small pores in the cell wall and then you bring together the cells with the ligation mixture and give it a heat shock which is at 42 degrees centigrade for one to two minutes okay and then you take up the cells out of the 42 degrees centigrade and then you can keep them at 37 along with some amount of fluoria broth to stabilize the cell wall bring it back to remove the pores. Okay, the stability is very important after the transformation. The second method is known as electroporation based method. In case of electroporation method, you just clean the cells from all the kinds of sorts and then transform your ligation mixture into it, giving an electric shock. So this is a very little description of these two methods that we can transform our ligation mixture in the bacterial cells or in the prokaryotic system just by either a chemical method or electroporation. Now what I will do is that I will take you to both of those methods. Uh, this is a pictorial depiction of that, that how we do it, that in case of chemical decompeted cell in the preparation of these cells, what we do is that we grow the bacterial culture in which we are trying to transform our ligation mixture. Okay? We grow it overnight. That's called an overnight culture. Okay, We grow an overnight culture 
And then in the morning when we come back, we take about five to 10% of the inoculum from our overnight culture that is called primary culture. And we inoculate a fresh Loria broth flask with five or 10% of the culture. It means that if you have 100 ml of the Loria broth in a flask, you add either five ml of the overnight culture, which is the primary culture, or you add 10 ml of the primary culture. It does not generally mean if you use 10 ml, the bacterial culture, the new flask having the new inoculum will uh, quickly give rise to a lot of bacterial cells and will reach the optical density very soon that is desired for the transformation purposes. Okay. If you are taking 5% culture, it will take a little bit longer time. But it is always advisable to take 5% because it helps to synchronize the cells and the mature cells in your culture, they are much less if you compare with the uh, higher percentage of the inoculum. Okay? It means that try to use 5% culture. But if you are in a hurry and you are, short, you are running short of time, you have a lot of plans for other experiments during the day, then you can use 10 ml of the culture for inoculation of the fresh uh, Loria broths. Okay? After you have grown the cells, how much do you grow the cells in case of chemically competent method? In this case, it is always desirable to grow the cells to an optical density of 0 0.45 to 0 0.5. Okay, the optical density is very important here. Why? Question is why we go for optical density of 0 0.45 to 0 0.5 is the reason this is an early log phase. When the cell is replicating or dividing at a very fast pace, its cell wall is very thin. Okay? It is only at the end of the log phase or early stationary phase where the cell wall becomes thick. And we are actually interested to in produce pores in it. Thicker is the cell wall, harder it is to introduce pores in the cell wall. Okay. So in the early log phase, the cell wall is very thin and we can easily introduce pores into it. So for chemically competent cell preparation, remember, that you have a primary culture, you have a secondary culture, okay? And then you grow the secondary culture to an optical density of 0 0.45 to 0 0.5 at 610 nanometers wavelength of the light. After you have obtained the cells at this density, you can proceed for repression of the competent cells. Now, there is a term here which is usually known as synchronized growth or synchronized culture. When you have made a primary culture overnight, what do you think? At what stage would be the cells in the morning? Early log phase, late log phase, or stationary? Most of the cells are now in stationary phase. They have gone to their complete growth. There is depletion of the media. And now the cells are not dividing that fast. So what they will do is they will start, keep on utilizing the nutrients and they will generate thick cell walls. Okay. But still there are some cells in there which are in the replication stage. Okay. and they are having comparatively thinner cell walls. What's a synchronized culture is that you put this primary culture on your bench for an hour or a little more, okay? 
what you see is that the cells are settling down towards the bottom of the flask. Okay, so the heavy cells actually settle down faster. The light cells, which are due to the reason that their cell wall is very thin and they are not very heavy, they keep on floating on the top of the liquid broth. It means that you have two types of layers in this primary culture if you keep that culture for an hour or two on your workbench. So if you take the cells from the top of this flask, they will be almost at the same growth stage. Okay, they are lighter in their weight. They are not settling down to the bottom. It means that they are already having a thin cell wall around them. The thicker cell wall bacteria, they will settle down. So, make a secondary culture from the primary culture from the top of the flask. Okay, so that the new cells which grow in the secondary culture, they maintain the cell wall at a thinner stage in the early log phase because you are actually growing the secondary culture for just two hours or three hours maximum to obtain the optical density between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5. Okay. So it means that most of your culture will be synchronized. That in other word means that your bacterial cells, they will have, all of them, they will have a thin cell wall, except a few. Okay. So synchronized culture always gives you a very good transformation efficiency. Okay. And you are concerned with it because you want to transform the ligation mixture and you want to screen your recombinant plasmids and more are the number of colonies more are the chances that you will pick all the different types of recombinants that you are preparing if you are using a single insert even then you will get larger number of the recombinant colonies and you can easily screen your transformation mixture after that. So I hope you will keep this point in mind and you can have may have written it or to make a note of that, that from a primary culture, get the synchronized cells by keeping the flask on your bench for about an hour or two and then take the 5% or 10% inoculum from the top of the liquid. Okay not from the whole cell mix after shaking it, okay? Or taking your pipette man or pipette down to the bottom. Don't do that. Just take the liquid from the top, which has fresh cells and inoculate a second flask and then wait for the optical density to reach 0.5 and between 0.4 and 0.5. Okay, so all this process, after you have generated the secondary culture, you take the culture now to ice so that the cells should stop growing or metabolizing anything to make their cell wall thick again, okay, if they are stagnant culture. So you do all this in an ice bucket, you spin in the refrigerated centrifuge all the cells, or the volume that you need actually. Spin it so that you can discard the laurier broth and the cell pellet is at the bottom. And then what you do is that you treat or you resuspend the pellet in 0 0.1 molar calcium chloride. You will immediately see that the cells are turning whitish, which is an indication that calcium chloride is having some sort of reaction with the cells, okay? If you're not getting that reaction, it means that your calcium chloride is not good. Your calcium chloride is hygroscopic. 
means that if you are opening the bottle of calcium chloride again and again, the moisture from the atmosphere will enter into calcium chloride and it will be hydrated to a certain level. And this may also result in the loss of the function of calcium chloride. Okay? So always use a dried powder of calcium chloride and tightly close the cap whenever you use it so that there should be no atmospheric moisture getting into the calcium chloride. Okay, remember that. This is another precautionary step. So after treatment with this, with a 0.1 molar calcium chloride, you will see the cells are getting whitish. And then obviously you have to spin it again to get the cell pellet and discard the supernatant, which is mostly 0.1 molar calcium. Okay. Now the indication that you are really getting the good competent cells is when you spin for the first time, when the cells are in Loria broth, you will get a very compact pellet. After treatment with calcium chloride, you will never get a compact the cells will be adhering on the tube from the bottom to the top, okay? Giving you a very fluffy type of palleted cells all along the one side of the tube, okay? This is a second indication that your cells have been treated very well with calcium chloride. These are visual indicators that your cells are really getting a good treatment of calcium chloride. Okay, so in the beginning, for example, if you took 50 ml culture or say 30 ml culture in 50 ml falcon tube and you spun it, the first suspension of the cells in calcium chloride will be by using the equal amount of calcium means if it was originally 30 ml culture, you add 30 ml of the calcium in the first treatment. And then you spin it, you get a fluffy kind of pellet sticking all the way from bottom to the top of the tube. Okay. You decant very carefully the calcium chloride solution after spinning it. Okay. And then you resuspend the cells in about 2.5 or 3 ml of fresh calcium chloride, which is 0.1 molar again. Okay, just resuspend your cells. And you are doing all these things at a very cold temperature. You are using ice for keeping your tubes. And you are ice using a refrigerated centrifuge so that the temperature may be kept close to four degrees centigrade when the cells are spinning. So your final suspension of the pellet after the first calcium chloride treatment is in two to 2.5 ml of calcium chloride, which is again 0.1, okay? And after resuspending those bacterial cells, you can take those cells to pre-chilled a pound of tubes and you add 200 microliter of the competent cells per tube. Now, if you are have, so have suspended, for example, your bacterial pellet that was first treated with calcium chloride, and now you have again suspended in calcium chloride, which is say 2 ml, the whole cells are now suspended in 2 ml of calcium chloride. So how many tubes of 200 microliter you should get. Five per ml, okay? So if 200 microliter per tube, five tubes will have one ml of the culture, okay? And two ml will be accommodated in 10 tubes. So in a single go, using 30 ml of the culture, original, 
secondary culture, you get about 10 tubes of 200 microliter each having the bacterial cells in them and those are the competent cells. Now what you can do is that you can use one or two or three or four tubes for transformation and keep rest of the tubes at minus 80 degrees centigrade. There's one step that you can include in that, that once you aliquot the two ml calcium chloride treated cells in a 200 microliter fractions into different tubes, if you chill them down immediately by putting these tubes in liquid nitrogen, okay, it will increase your transformation efficiency that well. If you don't have liquid nitrogen, obviously you can keep the tubes from ice directly at minus 80 degrees centigrade for a few weeks, okay? And you can take out a tube, transform, and then proceed your work. So it depends how many transformations you want to do. If you want to do one, two, three, four, five, so you take the number of tubes accordingly, and each tube you use one transformation reaction. So a transformation is carried out always in 200 microliter of the competent cells. And you don't take 200 microliters from one ml actually, you have already made the aliquots. When you did, did the second calcium chloride treatment with a smaller volume. Okay. So remember that. So once you have prepared the competent cells which are stored at minus 80 degrees centigrade, and now you also have the ligation mixture, what you do is that you take out, for example, for one transformation, you take out one tube, put it on ice, and let the cells melt okay, or get stable in ice for about 20 to 30 minutes. And you can also actually add one microliter of the ligation mixture to these cells and let them stabilize together on ice for 15 to 20 minutes. After that, what you do is you take that tube from the ice to a heating bath, water bath, always use water bath for this transformation. Sometimes people take it to a heating block. That's also, it works actually, but a circulating heating bath is more efficient in maintaining the temperature rather than a heating block which can have some air spaces between the tube and the block. Okay? The water will be in direct contact with the tube, so it will give a better change in temperature. Another thing which I have seen actually, so sometimes the laboratories, they pr procure different types of append of tubes. Sometimes uh, they take it from one vendor, sometimes they buy it from another vendor, and the manufacturers are different. The difference in the manufacturers does not matter, but the differences in the thickness of the wall of the tube does matter. Thinner is the wall of the tube, more efficiently there will be a change of temperature when you will put that tube from ice into the 42 degrees centigrade water bath. Okay. So it means a thicker cell wall tube will take much longer for the competent cells to reach 42 degrees centigrade, okay? So you may have to incubate it for a longer time, like two minutes or one and a half or half minutes, okay? So always press the tube with your fingers and try to see the flexibility. If they're more flexible, it means the cell wall, uh, the, the, the wall of the pend of tube is thin. If it is hard or tough, it means the wall of the tube is thicker. So accordingly, you determine whether you are trans your transformation will be for one minute or for one and a half minute or two minutes. Okay, so 
What you have done already is that you have put your ligation reaction, one microliter of that in 200 microliter of bacterial cells, and you have placed the tube in ice for about 15 to 20 minutes so that everything gets stabilized. And then you immediately take this tube to 42 degrees centigrade water bath and keep it immersed in water for one to two minutes. And I told you the reason of variation of that. Okay. After that time, you take out the tube and bring it to room temperature. It's not essential to keep it at 37 degrees at this point of time. Okay. So towards this tube, which is having 200 microliter of the bacterial cells and one microliter of your ligation mixture, you add one ml of Loria product. So what is the total volume now in the tube? It is 1.2 ml. 200 microliter cells, competent cells, and one ml of Loria broth. So the total volume is 1.2 ml. Okay. And you incubate this tube at 37 degrees centigrade without shaking. No shaking at all. You keep that tube at 37 for an hour. The reason is that with the calcium chloride you generated pores in the thin cell wall. Now you are allowing the cells to stabilize themselves by regrowing their cell wall to the normal situation. Okay, all the pores get sealed by this treatment and the cell wall becomes stronger. So after the incubation of the competent cells after transformation at 42 degrees centigrade, you add 1 ml of Loria broth and keep that tube at 37 for an hour and then you are ready for spreading on a plate. A Loria broth plate having agar in it. Okay, you can take small aliquot out of 1.2 ml and you can spread it on the top of the plate and incubate the plate at 37 degrees centigrade overnight so that next morning you can see the colonies. Now remember that every vector or plasmid has got a selection marker gene on it. Remember, you must add that antibody in the medium before you pour the medium into the plates so that only the colonies Bacterial cells, which have got the plasmid in them, only they should grow in this plate. Okay, it's not a simple Loria broth. This is Loria broth plus the selection marker, which is mostly the antibiotic. Okay, only the colonies which will be found on these plates, they will all have the plasmid, whether or not plasmid has an insert all the colonies will grow. And if you are selecting based on alpha complementation, that is blue-white screening. So what you will do is that just before spreading the cells, you will spread on the top the x -Cal solution and IPTG solution. It means that you take out the plate having the antibiotic on it, and then you have prepared already IPTG and x -Gal separately. So you take 5 to 10 microliters of x -Gal and you spread it over the top of the plate. You, have, you spread the IPTG 5 to 10 microliters on the top of plate so that the induce and the colorimetric substrate, they are also there on the plate on the top. And the colonies will grow if those vectors have the lag Z promoter with the alpha part of the beta galactosidase gene. Then the self-ligated plasmids, they will show you blue colonies and the ones which will have an insert 
will give you, show you white color. So the blue white screening can be done very easily on these plates. And you can pick the white color means lower to screen your recombinant plasmids in those cells. Okay. So this is how you do transformation when you are using chemically competent cells. Okay. When you are doing the same thing using electrocompetent cells, I have changed a the slide. There are not much differences except that instead of treating the bacterial pellet with calcium chloride, you are just washing the cells. What it means? You grow a primary culture. Next morning, you grow a secondary culture. But in the electrocompetent cells, you don't stop growth at early log phase. Don't do that. In this case, we need thick cell wall because a bacteria should be strong enough to bear the electric shock. So we keep the cell wall very thick. And how we can do that? That we let the secondary culture grow to an optical density of 0 0.9 to 1. In the earlier case, we stopped the cell growth at an optical density between 0 0.4 and 0 0.5. But in this case, we grow the cells to an optical density of 0 0.9 to one, assuring that the bacteria, they are at low, late log phase. At late log phase, they will have thick cell wall. Okay, so this is one of the major differences in the harvesting of cells in case of chemically competent methods and electro-competent electro cells. So you grow the cells to 0 0.1 to 1 OD, you spin the cells, same way you spin in case of calcium chloride treatment. You get the pellet, decant the laria broth, wash the pellet, or I mean with water. It should, should be sterile, high quality water. Okay? Suspend your material cells in that. In case of calcium chloride method, you use the first piece of suspension of cells in 30 ml of 0.1 molar calcium chloride. In this case, you resuspend the cells in the same volume, 30 ml of distilled water. The purpose is to remove all the salts which are still associated with the bacterial cells. And you know the reason for that, to remove the salt, the pure water does not allow the electricity to pass through. If you add salt to the water, the current can flow very easily. Okay. So in case of electrocompetent cells, you don't want to keep any of the salts associated with the bacteria. Otherwise, a lot of current can flow there and it can result into the bursting of cells rather than the cells take up the DNA and keep stable, they will burst out in the presence of the salt. So you need to remove as much salt as possible. So a single treatment of the pellet or a single washing with the double distilled water, distilled and suspending the pellet in that water and then spinning once is not sufficient. You have to do this cleaning at least two or three times. It means that you take 30 ml of the cells, you spin it at 4000 to 5000 RPM for five minutes. You get the pellet, you discard the supernatant, which is a laurea broth, and then you resuspend your cells in pure water, double distilled sterile water. 30 ml uh, quantity can be used here. Okay. Suspend the cells, spin them, get the pellet, decant the water. That water contains the traces of the salts which were left from L'Oreal blood. And repeat this at least two more times. Almost all that 
cells will be gone. And after the third treatment, you can spin the cells, decant water, and resuspend the cells the same way you did in case of chemically completed cells. There you used 0.1 molar calcium chloride for suspension. Here you are using only water, high quality water. So resuspend the pellet in 2 ml of water. Okay, and dispense 200 microliter aliquots into append of tubes and put those append of tubes in minus 80, minus 80 degrees centigrade. After dipping them in liquid nitrogen, or if you don't have liquid nitrogen, you can take your cells directly from ice to minus 80. Okay? And those can be stored there for about a month. You should have to use those cells within a month actually. Okay? Otherwise, they lose their competence. I hope that you uh, know the major difference between calcium chloride treated cells and electrocompleted cells. In one case, you give the treatments calcium chloride, in the other case, you give treatment with simple water. And the stage of the cell is, in case of chemically completed cells, they are from early long phase. Here, in electrocompleted cells, cells are at late long phase. They are having thick cell water. And you make the aliquots the same way you make for chemically completed cells and store your tubes at minus 80 degrees centigrade. Okay. And then you can bring out one tube, you have a ligation reaction. You can bring, take one microliter of the ligation reaction, put it in 200 microliter of cells, and keep it on ice for 15 to 20 minutes, just like the transformation that you did in case of. Calcium chloride treated cells. Just let them stabilize at 4 degrees centigrade for an ice for a little while, 15 to 20 minutes. And then instead of taking them to a water bath, which is 42 degrees centigrade, you don't use that water bath. You just take your tube, which is having the bacterial cells in water and one microliter of the ligation mixture. Take it, take the liquid out, the cells out in a covet. I will show you the covet in the next slide and put it into an electroporator. That's a small electric supply which is hooked up with an electroporator component. And you put your tube there and then you adjust the voltage here and for bacterial cells, different types of bacterial cells, there are different voltages. Okay, so you identify, I'm doing transformation in E. coli, you set the machine for E. coli voltage, okay, and press the button. That's a trigger for giving an electric shock. After you have pressed the trigger, take out the covet, the cells out of the covet into again, again into the append of tube, and you can now spread them into the onto the plates and remember the plate must have an antibiotic in it you cannot take any antibiotic the antibiotic which the vector has resistance for that okay and if you're getting again blue white screening don't forget to spread IPTG and x -car on the top of the plate and you can select the colonies based on blue white colors any question in the bacterial transformation either through the calcium chloride treated cells or electrocompeted cells any questions so far the caution is very important you do all your steps at cold temperature when you are preparing the computed cells both ways whether calcium chloride or electrocompeted the OD is different for both of the cells, or types of cells. The treatment is different. One is, in one method, you are doing chemical treatment. In the other method, you are cleaning the cells just with water. They are very much easier to prepare, actually. The electro, uh, the electro component cells, you are just doing nothing, just suspending the pellet in cold water, 
spinning it again two or three times and then finally you suspend the pellet in two hundred microliter volume and then you do the transformation giving the electric shock and here again you have to add one ml of l'oreal broth after the shock because the shock to the cells is very very bad so at very high voltage okay you need to stabilize the cells by giving them nutrition and that nutrition is in the form of l'oreal broth you add one ml of l'oreal broth here so at the end of the transformation both in case of Electrocompetent cells or chemically competent cells. The total volume of the transformation mixture is 1.2 mL. Okay. And now, how you can determine the transformation efficiency for these cells? Transformation efficiency is that suppose you take 50 microliter out of 1.2 ml and suspend them 50 microliter you spread it on a plate and for example you are getting 30 colonies on the plate it means 30 transformants but 50 microliter how many colonies you will get if you spread from 1 ml so transformation efficiency is always calculated per ml but you have 1.2 ml here so you need to calculate what is the transformation efficiency per 1 ml so simply divide 1000 microliters and you took 50 microliters okay 1000 divided by 50 it number negative. About 20, I think. Okay. So it means that multiply that figure 1000 divided by the volume that you used in microliters and you get a value. In this case, it is 20. Okay. Multiply 20 with the number of colonies on your plate. And that is the total number of colonies if you spread all 1 ml of the media. Okay. That is the transformation efficiency per ml. Okay. So what it means, 1000 divided by 50 is equal to 20. 20 multiplied by 30 colonies, 600 colonies. So 600 clones per ml. This is very low transformation efficiency, but this is just for calculation, for easier calculation. Otherwise, a good transformation reaction should give you hundreds of colonies per five microliters. Okay, so the, tra the transfer a good transformation efficiency should be one into ten to raise power four or one into ten to raise power five. That is a good transformation efficiency that tells you that you had excellent competent cells and your transformation was very efficient. A low number of transformation indicates either your cells are not good or the shock, either heat shock or electric shock that have been given did not work well.